Find your scripture, your Bible this morning, Matthew chapter 6. I am 1,000% cheating today. I'm actually kind of skipping ahead, using something from Matthew for today, because I don't know how the pastor might do that. So. Anyway, we're going to full-blown study Matthew in February. Uh, but anyway, this kind of ties in with what we're talking about this month, Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 and uh, through 34. can kind of listen to this and agree with this. We're living for the eternal, not the temporal, not the temporary. Uh, eternity will always be there, but today is not, just like yesterday and tomorrow. Time is fleeting, time is going, but our days should be counting for eternity. Right? Today, what you're going to see, if you're not careful, you're going to kind of look at the surface level and you're going to think that it's about something that it's absolutely not. The message is entirely and completely hinged upon total dependence on God. Total dependence. Nothing left, nothing on the table, no holding back, no cross fingers behind your back. 100% relying on God. Verse 19, it says this. It says, Lay not up yourselves treasures upon, treasures upon earth, where moth and rust does corrupt, uh, where thieves break through and steal. But lay for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust does corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. If you think about the things in your life, there are all kinds of things all over the place. As a matter of fact, uh, we're actually kind of a society that, that it just is all about things. Uh, let me get, see, how many kiddos I got in here? You four will do it for sure. Haley, do you want to participate? No. Come on, up here. Haley, and uh, we'll get Allison up here too. Yeah, come on. All y'all, y'all just line up here in front. Give me a straight line. Okay? Now, before y'all come up here, y'all have to listen to everything I say, right? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, so I need, there's six of y'all, so I need two rows. I need three in the front and three in the back. Got it? Wait, you'll go to Stephenville School. It's a straight line, so that's three in the front and three in the middle. Man, they're star test ready. They're star test material at them, right? They're ready. Okay, so when I say the word things, what word? Things. Things. That's two syllables, right? Okay. Uh, when I say the word things, or I say the word thing, I want the three of y'all to trade places. Got it? Okay, boys. Promise not to hurt anybody. Do it right now. Say, I promise. I promise. In front of the church, I promise. I promise. I promise. All right, here we go. All right. I'm going to read this. Y'all ready? But we are a society of things. Listen to the analysis of Mr. and Miss Thing. Uh, are a very pleasant and successful couple. At least there's a verdict for most people who tend to, me to measure success with a thingometer. Uh, when the thingometer is put to work in life of Mr. and Miss Thing, the result is startling. There he is sitting down on a luxurious and very expensive thing, almost hidden by a large number of things. Things to sit on, things to sit at, things to cook on. They didn't know they were an exercise today. Things to eat, all shiny, uh, new things, things, things. Things to clean, things to wash, things to uh, amuse, things to give pleasure, things to watch. Things to play. The girls got it figured out. Who's that? <laughs> Y'all take a breath. Things on four wheels. Things on two wheels. Uh, things to put on top of the four wheels. Things to uh, put behind the four wheels. Things, things, and things. And they're in the middle of Mr. Miss Things, smiling and, and pleased pink with things. <laughs> Thinking of more things to add to their other things. Secure their castle of things. Well, Mr. Thing, I think that we have some bad news for you. Thank y'all. Y'all can sit down. <laughs> Life is not about things. Life is about, believe it or not, eternity. 
Luke 12 and 33, Jesus says, he says, Sell that you have and give animals. Provide yourselves bags with wax, which wax not old, the treasure in, he in heavens that fails not, uh, where no thief approaches nor moth does corrupt. Jesus is saying, look, buy things, buy good stuff, you know, buy the stuff that's going to last, because it's not about the stuff. It's not about the things that are going to um, fade away or that are going to rust. And so you think, okay, well, wait a minute, you're scratching your head going, wait a minute, I can't have a car, I can't have, like, a nice car, i got to drive, like, a Pinto, you know, or i got to drive, you know, like, i got to always buy the H-E-B brand, which is not always good, okay? Um, no, it's, it's, it's not about not having nothing. Colossians 3 and 2, set your affection on things above, not the things on the earth. We're to have hearts and minds set upon God. Uh, so much that no ring or no shiny thing can draw our attention away from God. No job, no Chevy, no nothing should come in the way of me and my relationship with God. Jesus, Jesus wants all of our devotion, all of it, 1,000% totally and completely His. Look with me at verse 21. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. I don't know if any of you are very much into the Lord of the Rings movies or very not, but I love them all, and I've read, I've seen them all. I've not really read most of a few of the books, but not all of them. But in there, there's this creature who worships this ring, and he, and he calls it my precious, and he just rubs it, and it's just important to him. It's all that he is about this ring. Um, it's the same idea you hear. Whatever is as important to me is whatever I'm going to give the most priority. I'm going to give the most time. I'm going to give the most dedication. I'm going to be the most sold out for. I'm going to be the most convinced by. And so when you, when you read stuff like this, and if you look in your Bible, it's red, or if you look in your Bible app, it's still red. And so that means that Jesus is talking, and so we've got to pay attention to it, and it's real stuff. It's not um, this or that. It's real truth that he wants us to put in our hearts. And so what do we treasure? Do we treasure anything more than God is the question today. Our family, our friends, our work, our home, whatever. It is. Is it more important? Is it more important than God? A relationship with God. Martin Luther said, that is his God, for he carries it in his heart. He goes about with it night and day. He sleeps and wakes with it, uh, be it what it may, wealth or self, pleasure or renown. What is our God today? What's important to us? Do we treasure eternal things, things that, things that you may not necessarily see but you know, faith that you have, um, the thing that saved you, the gospel, the, the word of God, the fact that we're delivered from a punishment of eternal hell, y'all. Is that a treasure to us? Is that something that we just draw near to, that we find important, that just means the world to us? Do we treasure our church? Martha Nicholson, a great poet, she said this. She says, one by one, he took them from me. All the things I valued most. Until I was empty-handed. Every glittering toy was lost. And I walked earth's highways grieving in my rags and poverty. Until I heard his voice inviting, lift your empty hands to me. And so I held my hands toward heaven, and he filled them with a store of his own transcendent riches until he could contain no more. And at last I comprehended, with, with stupid mind and dole, that God could not pour his riches into hands that were already full. Y'all, if y'all examine your hands today, you have unmeasurable blessings from God in your hands. Unmeasurable deliverances, unmeasurable things in which He's done and worked in your life already, whatever age you are. When our hearts are right, we treasure heavenward things. Not the temporary cheap things that rust and lose their shine and fade away. When our hearts are right, people become priorities. Uh, this, this heaven and hell become real places. Uh, this Bible becomes a real book. 
and God is working on us greater and better than he ever has before. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, verse 22, uh, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, the whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? How many of you can see without your glasses? That'd be kind of scary. Church would look a little different, wouldn't it? Right? The eye is the window to the soul. In our eyes, uh, we focus. I can choose what to see and what not to see. And so in this, I can choose to look at the light or I can choose to look at the dark. Where is my focus? Is it, is it God or is it on the things? Is it on God or is it on the stress? Is it on God or is it on the pill? Stewardship is a thousand percent about our focus being on God. Proverbs 4, 25 through 27. Let thine eyes look right on, pitched, set, this way. Let thine eyelids look straight before thee, so there's no, there's no fluttering. Ponder the path of thy feet, and let thy ways be established. Turn not the right hand or the left. Remove thy foot from evil, it says. You may remember that song uh, that you try to sing to kids or you teach at a young age. Uh, oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. Be careful, little eyes, what you see. For the Father up above is looking down in love, so be careful, little eyes, what you see. But the thing is, that song is not just for kids. It's for everybody. With our eyes, we need to be careful. We need to be careful that our focus is solely and mainly on the Lord. And on God what He has for us. And that relationship only happens by knowing Christ personally. Because Christ bought me, because Christ paid for me on the cross, He owns my soul. It's His. I give it to Him. And so then He gets my focus. He gets my all. He gets my heart. He gets my life. How do I know that, you'd say? Look at the next verse. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and man. I love the scripture. It's ingenious because the idea of, a, of two bosses, imagine if you had two bosses at work. Which boss would you like? The boss that lets you slack off or the boss that makes you do what you're supposed to do? The boss that makes you follow the procedure or the one that says, no, don't worry about it. Or the, or the one that says, no, you need to clock in on time or you, know, you can be a little late. Which boss would you care for? And so, so it is with God. You cannot have two masters. God is who he is. He doesn't change. We can't have this other thing, this mammon, this self-righteousness that we create, that we worship, that we want, that's ours. That we kind of, that we kind of cut and, and curtail how we want it to look. We cannot serve God. And so he pulls it. I love Jesus. If you catch this, you'll just catch this. Jesus, remember, Jesus was the original um, great preacher. If somebody ever tells you that he preaches better than Jesus does, then they're lying. Okay? Uh, Jesus wrote the book on preaching. He wrote the book on exhorting truth. He's the one who makes it perfect. And so he says, look, you can't do it. There's God or there's mammon. There's no way that you can do this. And then in a wonderful way he does, he shows you how. He says, therefore I say to you, take no thought for your life. Next verse. What you shall eat, what you shall drink, neither to get your body, which you shall put on. It is not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment. You and I live. We live in what, what are we going to wear? What are we going to have? What are we going to eat? Uh, Y'all are already thinking about what you're going to have for lunch. Is it meat for me of the day or is it cotton patch? I mean, that's kind of where we live and breathe and operate. But he's saying, no, don't, not even the basic stuff. Take no thought for your life. Don't worry about it. Philippians 
Corinthians 4, 6, and 7, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known of the God, unto God, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Right? Christ has our life. He has all of it. Not just part of it. He has the whole thing. But we've got to let Him have it. Behold, the fowls of the air, they sow not, nor neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Uh, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. These are birds, guys, birds. Are you not much better than they? Which of you, by taking uh, one thought, can add one cubit into his stature? Any of you have been short your whole life? It's always been your, been your, been your station in life. You could want and want and want to be taller. I want to be a foot taller so I can be picked first for the basketball team. I want to be this or I want to be that. I don't want to have my big nose. Fill in the blank. But thinking that all day long is not going to change it. Why take any thought for raiment? Why do, you, why do you care about what you wear? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, and they toil not, and neither do they spin. What happens is you and I, we get in the, we get in the flick in the middle of life and we just freak out and we start toiling and spinning and just worrying and stressing and everything else and we just go, oh my goodness, and what's going on? And we never look up and we never pay attention to God and we are just so to pieces with ourselves about our lives and God is saying, look, I'm taking care of the birds and I'm taking care of the flowers and why in the world won't I take care of you? Who are we to say that God is going to take care of us and through every single station of our life in every way? How they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. Maybe a prayer ought to be, God, teach me not to toil, teach me not to spin, teach me just to grow. The root creation that exists in our world, you have water in your sink. Get this. Because God created a system in which water would flow down a mountain through through a river all the way down to an underwater cavern or whatever else and would come up through a well and then be dispensed into your sink because of God. The rain comes because God set up the system in which the rain would, come, would cycle itself back in onto the shore. Things grow because of God without one hitch. Matter of fact, he does it too good sometimes. He sends us too much rain. Or he sends us too much cold. It's 17, God, quit! You know? Or ice. Or sleep. It's just him showing off because he can. I praise you that all I am is yours. This is another prayer that could be yours. That I could delight you as the lily does or the tree. Even the sparrows, just living the life you've granted. That's my Lord, that's my God. Oh. Psalm 39 and 5. Behold, thou hast made my days as a hand breath, as a vapor. Mine age is nothing before thee. Verily, every man in his best state is altogether vanity. If we ever lament what age we are or how we're feeling or everything else, remember, it's just a day where God wants everything. God still wants us to be committed in the, in, the, in the early age and in the older age. It's still all God's. Is he going to shut up? No, we've got a few more to go. Hang in there. If God has not... Ring your clapper yet? It's coming. Because he rang mine about 16 times already. And I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now, I went to Texas, Texas public school, so it's kind of, you know, it takes a minute sometimes. One of these. So these means it must be what he just talked about. What was the these that he just talked about? And so there's lilies and there's flowers. Okay, well that makes sense. We've got lilies, flowers, and some dude. Some dude named Solomon, right? 
Okay, well, in today's terms, it would be a lily, and it would be birds, and then it would be like Bill Gates times thousands. And so Jesus is saying, look, the richest guy that ever was, Solomon, arrayed in all his gold and all his purple and all his linen and everything that ever could have been, is nothing compared to the birds or the flower. Talk about, a, talk about being a, God putting us in check, right? Everything in our lives. Solomon and everything that he had and all his wealth was nothing. And so the, the application there is just because God has been good to us for a while, we have a little bit here or we have a little bit there in savings or our 401k or our IRA or, or whatever, AWXY, whatever it is next year, is let's not ever pump ourselves up and think that we're something because of that. Or our house is paid off. Or our car is paid off. Or we're in an okay spot. No. God can undo that just as fast as he did it. We're blessed. Look at the next two verses with me. It says, Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which is which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, so shall he not more clothe you? the rain and the dirt for the grass to grow and then he sees where the grass falls. <coughs> it's just grass. That's just cow food. How much more does he care for you? And then he says, oh you little faith. Second time, therefore take no thought saying what shall you eat or what shall you drink or, or whatever you're going to be closed for. James 1.11, For the sun is no sooner risen with the burning heat, and that withered the grass, and the flower therefore faileth, and the grace of the fashion is perished, so shall the rich man fade away in all his ways. God is so bigger, is so much more, is so in the business of doing what he does, that often I think our lives would just erupt if we could just, just, just rub off a little bit of this. And get it and understand it. He cares for you and me more than he does the birds and the flowers, and they're just fine. You've still got those annoying songbirds that go off on their day off and start singing right on cue, and you've still got the nasty weeds that pop up right from just in the right places every single time, and they're just fine. Sticker burrs. Love my sticker burrs, my friend Art. They're awesome. Especially when you sit in them. They're just fine. And so, yes, God can take care of me. God wants my worry. God wants my frustration. God wants my life. And you know this verse. You've heard it. It's been all over the place. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. God is not interested in your stuff. God is interested in your heart. And then God says, your stuff, this little bit is used for my purposes, and the rest you can keep. Fair deal. That's what he says. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. God's righteousness is not our righteousness. My righteousness, whenever I think that I'm something and I bring it before God, it is literally, it is literally dirty rags. It is gross. It is filthy. It is nothing good. That God's righteousness is pure, it is clear, it is clean, it is gain, fresh out the fresh out the dryer, it is fresh smelling, it is great, it is awesome, it is pure. That is his righteousness. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness.
Take therefore no thought for the morrow. For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. The whole entire blowing open the Christian life principle is stop trying to take on the year. Stop trying to take on the month. Stop trying to take on the week. And let God have the day. Say it again. Stop trying to take on the year. Stop trying to take on the month. Stop trying to take on the week. And take on the day. Let God take on the day. I'll stand this morning as we get ready for first invitation. And so the application is, is far reaching today. Sometimes things or something else encroaches in our life and it becomes more important than God. It can be a job, it can be a relationship, it can be whatever. And it takes the spot, it takes a position where God should be. you got to get rid of that today. It's got to go. It's got to move. It's got to shut out. If you are an anxious worrier, then now you know what to do with that. God's got to have it, and it's got to be one day at a time, and you've got to let him work. How is he going to work? You have to practice crying out to him. Sunday school kind of shows up and doesn't it? All right? Bible study is good for you to be here in the morning. Take no thought. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. If you don't have a relationship with Christ today, then this spoke absolutely to you because God is speaking to you this morning saying, hey, this can be yours. This relationship is yours if you want it. <coughs> Accept it. You've got nothing good to bring to God. God brought everything to you on the cross. And Jesus Christ <coughs> died for you, paid for your sins. And so this morning, as we get ready to sing, it's kind of whatever the Lord is leading. If you need prayer, uh, then I ask you to come for that if you need something else. Baptism, uh, quest for baptism, question the preacher, right? It's a time for that. Say, hey, let me talk to you after church for a minute. Is that okay? We can do that. All right, so we sing this song.